We intend to cause havoc. It's not just a mission statement for our next guest, but also the full name of the band that we have in our studio right now, more commonly known as Witch. The band first formed in Zambia in the early 70s and released their debut record in 1972 called Introduction. 51 years later, they've just released a barnstormer of an album titled Zango. And today they're here with us live in our Annenberg performance studio. This is Witch. Live on Morning Becomes Eclectic. Sana kwa lesa 
It's Morning Becomes Eclectic. My name is Travis Holcomb, and I am honored to be here with which frontman and lead singer, Emmanuel Jaggery Chanda. Thank you so much for making the time to be here with us today. Thank you for having us around here. Thank you for hosting us. I was wondering if you could take us back to your first record. It's been quite a 50-year journey for you. Yes. Can you take us back to the first record, 1972, Introduction? What was going on in your home country of Zambia? What was happening in your life at the time? To start with, we didn't have a recording company in my, in my country, and we didn't uh, have facilities for recording. So a lot of good bands that existed at the time could not record. They didn't have the opportunity like my band had. And we had only radio station, one radio station in Zimbabwe, Salisbury that time. What kind of stuff were they playing on this radio station? This is where I, I, I'm coming to. We had the influence from the same source. We had uh, music from um, Europe, music from America, and some parts of Africa. And of course, we also had our own traditional music. Because in my country, we have about 72 ethnic groups. It's, uh, in terms of language, it's a bit negative, too many languages in the same country. But from my point of view, that's a very big repertoire of traditional stuff where you get from public domain and the, you can merge it with the, the, the Western music. The, Western, the difference is that the Western music is wider. You have about 12 half tones in a scale, you know, diatonic scale that is. You have minor scales and all sorts of scales. And then you have a, a very long, big, um, uh, what's this, A, B, C, D, what is it called? Alphabet. <laughs> alphabet, yes. You have pure alphabets, you have diphthongs, you have a lot of things. Whereas it's simple, our strength is in simple rhythms, crisscrossing. And then they are making a result, and that's a, that sounds a bit complicated. I can give you an example. You can have a quiver and a crochet for one drum. Pidi, pidi, pidi. And then the other one is playing the, the opposite. Timbi, timbi, timbi. This pidi, 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 timbi, timbi, kubi, kubi, The result is bakudu, 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 bakudu. And that gives us a rhythm. A bass, a very strong bass for, for rhythmic patterns. We wanted to play rock. That's what we heard on radio. That's what we heard people play. And we should tell people listening, Zamrock is sort of the, the it's genre. A it's a it's fusion. It's a fusion of music yeah. that you pretty yeah. much created yeah. in Zambia. Yes, we took, it took a long time for us to, to settle for Zamrock. We called it Zambiano. We called it all sorts of names because we didn't know which one to pick. Until one of our friends, a, a, a physician, but he was doing part-time DJing with the National Broadcasting. He's the, um, he's the one who, who coined Zamrock. Thank you. 
Thank you. Was there lots of rock music that you were listening to regularly? Later, yes. Yeah. Yes. Who we were some of your favorite? We also got same, same one source influence, uh -huh. one radio station. The other one was in Mozambique. I think it was Lorenzo Marquish. At night, me personally, I would sneak in the, in the living room when my family was sleeping. Mm -hmm. And I would take the small radio and cover myself uh, under the blanket to listen to top 50, top 30, beat in Germany and things like that. Did you have a favorite artist at that time? I liked uh, certain bands and individuals for their nice singing and things. Uh, but uh, well, I was introduced to heavy, heavy rock later. Mm -hmm. So we started playing the Deep Purple, Grand Funk, Railroad, like, we are an American hat. <laughs> <laughs> so we changed it to, we are a Zambian band. <laughs> because it wouldn't make sense for us to, to say we are an American band when we are in Zambia. <laughs> so you were involved with the, with the group's first four albums. Five. Five albums. Mm -hmm. And then where did you go off to? Were you doing, were you performing in different bands? Were you still doing music afterwards? No, 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 no. Um, before, before we went to the last album, we had opened for a band called Osibisa. Okay. They, had, they had toured Zambia. I had the chance to talk to their band leader, Ted Osei. He said they had a diploma from London School of Music. And inside me, he didn't know what he had deposited. I said, so if I get a diploma, in music, I should be able to be an international musician. That was what was going on in there. And that's what caused me to apply for um, a training course in, at one of the only, in fact, it's the only college that offered music. But it offered music with the condition that if you are government sponsored in that program, at graduation, you, you needed to teach in government schools for two years. So upon graduation, I left my band in Zimbabwe. And uh, I, I sneaked out of the country and went to join the band in Zimbabwe until I was found out that I had not reported for work as a teacher. So I came back to Zambia to take up my new job. And, it, and that coincided with the negative aspect of uh, the pandemic we had that time, HIV and AIDS, and uh, curfews and blackouts in the country, which was uh, detrimental to the progress of, uh, of the ZAM rock. And then it meant if you wanted to play at night, you go into a venue at 6 p.m., you only come out the following day, 6 a.m. Wow. And only a machine would play that long. <laughs> <laughs>
When did you first get word that Western audiences were starting to discover which for the first time? Well, the, it started with a negative report that there was a group of people in Germany who were bootlegging the Zambian music, oh. Zamrock, on pretext that most of the musicians had died. They didn't know where to look for permission or things like that. But uh, one of the pioneers of Zamrock, a friend of ours, Ricky Lilonga, was living in Denmark, and he got wind of it. So he, he, he talked to, I don't know how they met, but he talked to a guy here called Egon, yeah. He's a um, proprietor. Now again, right? Now again, right? Yes. yes. So one, one day I just got a phone call. And I was asked, Are you this, this? And I, yes. Would you like us to talk and things like that? And we, At that point of your life, what were you doing professionally? I'd, I'd given up on music, so to say, because I'd also lost my job. So I went into gemstone mining with the hope that if I strike big, I find the best gemstones. I should have enough money to establish a school of music and a very good studio for recording other artists. Even though that didn't work, the dream has not died yet. I still have that dream that one day I should retire, uh, imparting uh, knowledge to youngsters so that they can carry on the, the Zamrock torch. I got yeah. one more question for you. The album is called Zango. Yeah. What is the meaning of that title? Zango is a rendezvous, a, a, a meeting place in a village setup where people in the village, uh, members of the community, meet for different issues. They meet for meals when they have a nice queue after hunting. Uh, they, they meet there for counseling. They meet there for, to socialize and all sorts of things. And it's got different names in different parts of Zambia. Where that name comes from is where Patrick comes from. It's a Luvale term, which means a meeting place, a rendezvous, a meeting place in a village setup. You can meet there as five families for a meal or something like that. In this case, we are meeting there for music. Well, very good. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad to have you <laughs> back making new music and I hope you make a lot more. Fuck. 
Thank you. 